and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here for the first time welcome to another edition of vlogmas i thought that for today's video we could just sit down and play around with some makeup i asked you over on my community page on youtube a couple of weeks ago yes it's taken me a little while to get this video done and um, i asked if you wanted to see a full face of my most expensive makeup or my cheapest makeup and by far cheapest one so that is what i'm doing today i've gone through my drawers and tried to pick out the cheapest item I've got in each category but I've tried to make sure that it's stuff that's still available because there's nothing more annoying than me being like check out this product you can't buy it but check it out <laughs> So I will leave all the items that I use linked down below but I think I think everything is under five pounds. I will check because I always put my prices up on screen for you. But give or take, I think everything that I've tried today is under five pounds. So this could be really good if you want to pick up some new fun things on a budget or if you are just getting into makeup and you want to build up a cheaper makeup kit, this could be a really good starter point for you. And I think, spoiler alert, there's a couple of products in here that I think worked really, really well. So shall we rewind back in time and see Trina a little bit less made up than I am right now? I just spoke about myself in the third person, which is not cool. Let's let's just go, let's just let's just put on some makeup. <laughs> So you will have to excuse my hair. I got out of the shower and I was like, I want really cute, like wavy hair. So <laughs> I've got it in some ridiculous plaits because my hair is, um, I've got a lot of it. I have to put it in four plaits. So we'll try and keep it out of the way. So I've just moisturized using my Glossy Box 3-in-1 moisturizer. So let's get started with primer. Now I have to admit, I don't use primer very often. I haven't really found a primer that I'm like, oh, I really, really love. Um, the cheapest primer I have that I think you can still get hold of is from Essence. This is the Hydrating and Perfecting Primer. It's got SPF 20 in and it's one of these like dropper primers. So I think this is okay. I've never seen it do anything miraculous, but it does get really like messy around the bottle which I'm not a fan of. So we'll get a couple of drops of that. And it does separate a bit. You do have to really shake it in the bottle. We'll just pop that on the skin. I used this in my testing, full face of testing essence makeup a little while ago. And I found some products in that that I really loved. This was just, just all right, nothing special. But like I said, I'm not that big into primers, but it seems to be giving my skin a nice sort of glow to it, but not like, it doesn't feel oily. It feels a tiny, tiny bit like oily, but not like, you know, really oily where it feels like my foundation's gonna slip off my face. But it feels quite smooth and soft. So I think this is okay, but I'm not the best to judge for primers, like I said, because I've just never found that dream primer. For foundation, I'm going to be using this one from e.l.f. that is really new to me. This is the Flawless Satin Foundation. I've only used this once or twice, so I haven't formulated an opinion on this yet. I got mine in the shade Pearl. So we'll have to see give it another go and see what we think. It's really quite thick, <laughs> um, which surprised me like how thick it is. Like, yeah, it's not going anywhere, but it seems like it's a good color for my skin. I feel like it might be, when I've used it before, the tiniest bit light, but we'll see once we've blended it out and we can always um, bronze up a bit. So this is going to be a satin finish with a medium coverage. I do like quite a high coverage foundation, but I do like a medium coverage for more like day to day going to work. So we'll see. I've just got it all over my lips. <laughs> we'll see how it does. Yeah, I think the colour is, yeah, colour's fine. So you can see my like blemishes are definitely peeking through, but it's covering up some of the redness that I've got. I'm just coming out of a bad patch of my skin. Um, I had a bit of an incident where I went in a bit too heavy handed when I was doing some dermaplaning, which I will not be doing again. Um, and I also have sort of regular breakouts. I think they might be hormonal. Um, and you can see I'm kind of coming out the other side, like I've got a couple of scabs because, you know, 
I'm not very good at not picking my face, <laughs> but I'm definitely on the way out of that, which is good. My skin is clearing up quite nicely. So that's the first layer of foundation. I think it's okay. Like I would definitely prefer a little bit more coverage. So I'm gonna see if I can build it, but it's definitely got a nice glow to it. So we'll see if I can pop just a little bit more where I need a bit more coverage and see if we can build it at all. I'd say it is, it is a medium coverage. I'll, I'll say that that claim is correct, but we'll just see if you can build it at all. I do like how like sleek and smart and sort of small the packaging as you get. Um, 0 0.6 fluid ounces in here so that's a lot smaller. You normally get about one fluid ounce in a foundation bottle so it's cheaper but you don't get as much product so it's always worth checking the size before you think it's a good deal because you could maybe pay for a little bit more but get more product so sort of swings in roundabouts. Yeah, I don't think it's buildable. Like I'm not really getting too much more coverage out of it, I don't think. Maybe a little bit, but not too much. Like you can still see my sort of blemishes peeking through. But if you're looking for a medium coverage foundation, which this says it is, then yeah, it's nice. It's quite glowy, but not like overly dewy. Yeah, we'll have to see how it does with all my other products, but so far, I think I like this. I like it better than the other two times that I've used it. So maybe the primer does do something. <laughs> but yeah, so far, so good. Now for concealer, I've got two. I've got one for under the eye and one for any spot concealing. So this is from Revolution Pro and it's just in a little squeezy tube. It's looking a little bit, <laughs> a little bit battered. This is the Full Coverage Camouflage Concealer in C1, and it's one of those really thick um, sort of concealers that you, oh, can you see how hard that was to get out of the tube? <laughs> um, so sometimes I like to use this for spot concealing. So I'll go in with a little concealer brush, and then I'll blend it out with the sponge. So just where I feel like I need a little bit more coverage than the foundation gave. This is from Zoeva and it's the 142 concealer buffer. So I'm just looking for any sort of redness from any like leftover blemishes and just covering those up. And then I'll go in with my sponge and just blend that out. I'm definitely a fan of this concealer. I've had it for quite a while. Um, I do wish it was a little bit more full coverage, like you can still see some redness showing through, but I've never found a full coverage concealer that completely conceals. Like I've tried quite a few and there's always a little bit of redness, but by the time we put a little bit of powder on, we'll be fine. So this is super, super cheap and I definitely would recommend it. This is the one I'm gonna use for under my eyes. It's the Collection Long Lasting Concealer. And this is something I used years and years ago, um, but I picked up again quite recently since they've sort of redone the packaging. And I've only used it once or twice, and I thought it was okay, um, but I'm excited to give it another go because I don't feel like I've fully put it to the test. I've got mine in the shade Porcelain 2. So I think it's a good shade for me for concealing. Yeah, it's a good shade for me. It's really nice and brightening. Oh, I'm actually really enjoying this today. It's blended out really, really nicely. It looks really brightening under the eyes, but not like, you know when someone's got too much of a brightening um, concealer? And I feel like, personally, this is a really nice level. And I've used it as like an eyelid primer and it's just covered up any like discoloration that I had on my eyelids. Oh, we'll have to see when I set it with powder, but I'm really liking the way that my base looks today. This is the thing with makeup. You just never know. You can use a product one day and love it, and then you can use it with different products the next day and hate it, or your skin could be um, in a different state and it not work. So it's really difficult to like have consistency with products, but I think that looks really nice. I'm very happy with that. So on to setting powder. And my favorite setting powder, I've talked about this multiple times, also happens to be my cheapest setting powder, so that's a lucky co coincidence. This is the Coconut Baking Powder from 
I Heart Revolution. It did say I Heart Revolution, but it's just completely rubbed off my packaging. I'm so picky when it comes to powders. So this is a product that I can highly, highly recommend because I really like it. I don't tend to use much um, because I've got dry skin. I don't want to go in too heavy with the powder, but I do have enough to sort of set everything in place. So I just get a light dusting and really, really tap off the excess. Make sure I like get rid of any creasing. Like you can see, I've got some really deep set wrinkles into my eyes, so I'm gonna get creasing no matter what. But the goal is to avoid it as much as possible. And then just press the powder in. And you can see, it just sets it without it looking cakey. This is definitely the best setting powder that I've used and it's just my cheapest as well. I'm so, so lucky that my <laughs> favorite setting powder is so cheap because setting powders can get quite expensive. Um, but this one is, is, is good. And then I just take on a very big fluffy brush, the lightest of dustings all over my face just to set the foundation, but nothing much, just so it sets it. So I really, um, liking the way my base is looking at the moment like obviously I could have done with a little bit more coverage here for my taste um, but I think it's looking really good and it just just go to show you can get good products for an affordable price I'm pretty sure that all of these are under five pounds like I'll double check at the end when I'm putting all my links in but I'm 90% sure that everything I'm trying today is under five pounds so it just goes to show you don't have to spend all your money on like high end makeup obviously I do enjoy splurging every now and again but we can definitely get a good looking base without a high price tag now for bronzer I've got another essence product that I found in my testing essence makeup this is the mosaic compact powder and this is in 01 sunkissed beauty and I think this is a bit more of a shimmery bronzer it's not maybe that dark um yeah, you, I don't know if you can see. It's not the darkest. I tend to go for a little bit of a darker shade now, but that should definitely show on my skin and just give me a bit of a glow. So I'm gonna swirl around to, oh gosh. Oh wow, that's very pigmented. Oh, <laughs> um, like just be careful because a lot kicks back in the pan. Oh goodness me, look how much is on that brush. I'm definitely gonna need to tap some of that away. I think it's showing just like you can see but it's not like an intense an intense bronzer it's just giving a bit of like a little bit of healthiness to my skin that I've just like completely blocked out with foundation it's just adding a bit more like shape and glow yeah it's not like your heavy bronzer it's definitely a lighter shade but it's doing something it's not my favorite it's not my favorite but you can definitely see that it's doing something and if you want to go in with like a less heavy-handed bronzer then this could be good for you it's just got a nice bit of sheen to it but for me I just prefer these days a little bit more yeah I think for like a low slash no makeup kind of day, this could be good for that. But for what I'm looking for on an everyday purpose, I feel like I need just a little bit more. So for blush, I've got a blusher from Natural Collection, which is a really affordable brand that you can get at Boots. This is in peach melba and i remember i got this ages ago because soph does life was raving about this for ages and so i needed to get it i've not used this in a very very long time so i'm intrigued to see what i think of it now it did used to say blush but you can see i'd used it so much that it's like the the print has completely gone but it's a gorgeous gorgeous color but now i'm just thinking is it gonna be pigmented enough for me because I do like a bit more blush these days like you can kind of see it but not very much so we'll have to see if we can build it up it's funny how your tastes sort of change with makeup as you go because you can tell that I used to love this and now I'm looking at it like oh I need a bit more pigment than that so like it doesn't pick up 
that much from the pan, but oh, it seems to have picked up some. Let's see. Oh, it's pretty. You can pick up, like you can see, it's definitely, it's definitely there. You can pick up a reasonable amount. Oh, that's pretty. It's a really nice, natural, rosy blush. Oh, for like an everyday blush, like a go to work kind of blush. Oh, I feel like I'm rediscovering products. This is fun. I'm rediscovering things that I haven't tried in a while from my collection. That is, that is nice. I really like that. It's not too much. It's quite glowy, but really um, glowy. It's quite natural, but really pretty. Oh yes, I'm going to be using this more for sure and so, so affordable. I think they're like two pounds or something, but I'll put all the prices on um, the screen for you. But yeah, that's really nice. I'm really happy with that. Now for highlighter, the most exciting part. <laughs> but, mm, eyeshadow or highlighter? I'm not sure which is the most exciting part. Let me know in the comments down below. What is the most exciting point in doing your makeup for you? For highlight, I have got the Mega Glow Highlighting Powder from Wet n Wild in Blossom Glow. And it's a beautiful, beautiful pink shade. Mine's kind of falling apart a little bit but it is just a gorgeous, gorgeous shade. Let me swatch it for you. Oh, it's just a really metallic, light pink, beautiful shade. I love this so much and it's so affordable. You can get Wet n Wild at Boots. You can get it at Beauty Bay, I believe. I think I picked this up when I was in New York a few years ago. But yeah, it's definitely more accessible in the UK these days. So I'm just gonna swirl my brush, tap off the excess, and then put it on the high points of my cheek. I tend to put a bit on my nose, a bit on my upper lip, and then a little bit on my forehead. It's just really pretty and glowy. And it's pink, but it's not so pink that it doesn't look like kind of natural like obviously it's not natural but like it doesn't look like I've got blinding pink on my face like it's really pretty a little bit on the lip on the nose and then just a tiny bit on the forehead and then buff it all in oh, it's really pretty I haven't used this one in a little while as well and Definitely need to use that more because that is beautiful, beautiful. Now for setting spray, again, we have a product from Essence. Essence is just a really good, affordable brand. You can pick up Essence at Just My Look and at Wilco's and maybe um, feel unique. I'm not 100% sure, but this is the Keep It Perfect Makeup Spray. And I feel like I've not really used this that much. The Spray is a little bit intense if you're up close, so it's one I'd recommend that you use it a bit of a, yeah, about that much of a distance. Um, does it say what it's going to do? It just says it's a fixing spray. It doesn't say whether it's like hydrating or mattifying or anything like that, so we'll just see. I don't like the smell of this. <laughs> And the mister is very intense, but yeah, look how much, you can just see the droplets on my face. Like when I moved out a bit further, it wasn't so bad, but we'll just let that dry. But I really don't like the smell of this. Okay, base is set and I think everything is looking really nice. That highlighter now that it's had a bit of setting spray. I love it, I love it, I love it. I'm getting pins and needles again. <laughs> this is the joys of sitting on the floor. So for eyeshadow, we have got a whole heap of the e.l.f. bite size palettes. I've got one of my hairs on, that's really good. I've got six of these. These are three pounds each and they are wonderful. Let me show you the ones that I've got. So this one is pumpkin pie, cream and sugar, rose water, hot jalapeno, SIU, carnival candy so i have recently bought these three these ones are newer to my collection the more neutral ones are the ones that i got first and i feel like 
Hmm, what do I want to do? I'm filming a couple of videos after this, so I'm like, do I play it safe and just know that whatever I do is going to work? Or do I dip into the greens? I've been really enjoying green makeup recently, and it is Christmas. So I could do a green look, or I could do some blue, or I could play it safe and do a pretty neutral look but I do neutral all the time should we should we go for green this is the hot jalapeno palette should we should we play around with some greens and see what happens like at the end of the day it'll be what it'll be <laughs> but these are amazing little palettes for, for the price it is just the quality is amazing three pounds and yeah, they are, they are little wee babies, but they are very good for the money. So, hmm, I need to start with a color for my crease and none of these are that light in terms of the two mattes. So I'm wondering if I need to use a transition shade from a different one. I do like to use a lighter transition shade to help blend things in. I might go with this lighter colour in the Carnival Candy just to like set my base and build up a bit of a crease and then we'll go in with some greens. Oh, just caught that highlighter. It's beautiful. I'm so, so in love with it. I feel like I've just like rejuvenated my obsession with it. Let me know what your favourite affordable highlighter is because... I'm always looking for new highlighters to add to my collection. So I'm just building this up as a transition shade. Like it's not too drastically different from my skin tone, but it's just gonna helpfully, helpfully, hopefully help the green blend. Okay, so back to this palette. I'm gonna take the lighter matte green and I'm gonna take a very small amount on my brush, tap off the excess, and then just build this into my crease. I might bring you a little bit closer <laughs> while I do the eyes. For how little I had on my brush there, it is definitely pigmented. Just like slowly building this green up. Oh, no, and then she just taps it where she didn't want it. Wonderful, wonderful. Just to say, I say this every time, but I'm not a makeup professional. I am not, I've just hit myself in the eye with a brush. I am not a makeup artist. I'm just someone that likes to play with makeup and just do some simple looks and likes to play around a bit with color every now and again so I wouldn't ever expect anything like super complicated high detail on this channel but what I hope you will get is looks that are easily replicable <laughs> if you want to do them at home so I'm just really building this green in the crease just adding a little bit more here and there just realized this green eyeshadow is going to grow <laughs> wonderfully well with this pink highlighter <laughs> Oh well, oh well. So now I'm gonna deepen up things with this darker, deeper green. So first I'm gonna pack the colour on and then I'm gonna blend. Oh, that looks so pigmented. Like, that was with one swipe. And I'm just gonna build it up in the outer corner. Oh. <laughs> that is super pigmented. blends really nicely as well. This is gonna be <laughs> a dark look, <laughs> but we'll lighten it up with some shimmer in a moment. It's a really like deep, deep kind of green. Very Christmassy. <laughs> wow, they, honestly, the pigment in this green is like blowing me away. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with a mixture of the two shimmers. I'm gonna put the darker one over most of my lid and then the lighter one in towards the inner corner. And I'm gonna try and use a brush first. Gosh, that picks up really nicely on the brush. See if we can do this without a setting spray. Wow. Look at that shimmer. That is gorgeous. I'm just like patting that down and then I'll blend afterwards. Ooh, so pretty, so pretty. Very, very green. <laughs> Got the tiniest bit of fallout 
which I can just brush away, no problem. Just the tiniest bit, which is quite good for like bright colorful looks. You can choose to do your eyes first um, before your base, but I always prefer to do my base first. I think it's just personal preference. And then we'll go in with some of the lighter, almost yellow shade. I might in fact mix the two shimmers together to keep the green. And then just bring that into the inner corner. Yes, that looks so pretty. And then I'm gonna just take some of the darker green again and blend everything together. And then I'm gonna take some of the two greens and the shade that I used in my crease and just blend them across my lower lash line. So there's definitely a bit more fallout when I look up close, but again, lightly dust it all away. And that is the eyeshadow. I think it's really pretty. It's very green, but just really nice and pretty. I think these shadows are so good. The price is amazing. And I just love how many different ones they have and how good it is for traveling. Like, I don't think you can go wrong for three pounds. Okay, so now for mascara, what other mascara would I be using in a cheapest makeup product other than the Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effect? This mascara is £3, £4, and I use this very regularly. This is my second tube. I mentioned this in my favourites, um, favourite makeup products of 2020, because regardless of the price, it is an absolutely amazing product. You'll hear YouTubers raving about this all over the place because it is an amazing mascara. It's not the mascara that I go for if I want a really, really dramatic mascara, but it's the mascara I go for if I just want a quick mascara that I know is gonna work every time because some other mascaras you need to really work on and build up, whereas this is very very quick mascara and I know that every time it's going to work and I like the brush for my lower lashes as well so definitely definitely recommend this but make sure you get the green one because they are all different it's the false lash effect one that I recommend it just really does a bit of everything like it's lengthening it's separating it's building volume it doesn't do the best in any of those areas but it's kind of one of the best for doing all three I think if that makes sense so that's it on one lash and not the other and you can definitely build it up more but can, I think you can see that it's just really pretty so let me pop some on my lower lash line it's really pretty yeah, I honestly have recommend. I have honestly recommended this mascara multiple, multiple times, and just for the price, you honestly can't do any better. So that's the mascara done. I think this is great, and you need this for sure. Now onto lips, we have more essence. We <laughs> a lot of this is essence, like I said, because essence is just so affordable, and I couldn't do lip products in an affordable video without using an essence lip product. These are between two and three pounds each and I've raved about these all year and they were in my top 20 products for 2020. I've got three of the shine formula and three of the more sort of opaque matte ones and I'm going to go for something quite brown I think for this look. I think this one, do I have anything a bit deeper here? That's more red. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go for the This Is Me lipstick in shade three bold, which is this brown color here. These are just so opaque and creamy for the price. It's unbelievable. And they feel like, the cap doesn't feel the best, um, like most expensive, but the like component that's got the actual lipstick in feels really luxe. Yeah, you can see the pigment. so pretty and that is the lips i could have maybe done with a tiny bit of a darker lip i think with this eye like a bit of a deeper brown but actually i kind of like it let me know if you think this lip color goes with this eye in the comments so that is my full face using my cheapest makeup and honestly i am 
so happy with how this has turned out. Like, let me have a little bit of a close look in my mirror. Yeah, the base looks really nice. I could have done a bit more coverage, but it was medium coverage, so you know. The concealer is looking really nice still. The highlights, gorgeous. My eyes are wonderful. The only things I'm not so sure on are the setting spray and the bronzer. I feel like I could have done it with a bit of a deeper bronzer, so it might have been the shade rather than the product. And the setting spray, I just really didn't like the nozzle or the scent of it, but it seems to be working as a product. Obviously, this is the kind of product that you need to test out throughout the day, um, but I can see why I've kind of not reached for this so much since I first bought it. But I have rediscovered this blush. I think it looks so pretty. And this highlighter, rediscovering this has been amazing. This is just, I just want to swatch it again. Oh, how can you not think that this is beautiful? I think I'm going to need to get some different shades in this highlighter. It's so affordable and just so yummy. So let's take out my hair. Hopefully it's now dried from the shower. It feels maybe a tiny bit wet still, but we'll see what happens. Look at all this, all this frizz. <laughs> so let's see how it's all looking. Oh. Yay, look at all these waves. I love taking plaits out, it's so like, just satisfying. <sighs> so wavy. The one thing I don't like is how at the bottom, you know the bits that you can't get in the braid, they're a bit straight. So I would probably go over those with my like um, barrel waver that I've got. But let's take out the other side. So I feel like I need to go and style it a little bit, maybe add a bit of volume in the roots, crimp the bottoms a bit just to add the waves throughout. But yes, <laughs> loving the waves and just loving how everything has turned out overall. You'll have to let me know in the comments what you thought, what was the product that you thought worked best. And don't forget to let me know what your favorite stage of makeup is, because I'm very intrigued. For me, it's definitely between eyeshadow and highlights. I'm not quite sure, <laughs> uh, but I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you want me to do more makeup videos, please let me know, because I really enjoy doing them and I hope you enjoy watching them. So if you do, if you could give this video a like, and then I'll know to do more in the future. And if there's any specific makeup videos that you'd like me to do let me know because I'm very much open to suggestions thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time bye